The guest assisting in the treatment of the smoke victims, Dr. Lamb. Yes, this is Dr. Lamb. How are you? Uh, you've been working on, on some of the victims today, is that correct? Well, I, I have been working. They have simply been consulting with me okay, uh, right. with reference to what are, the, what are the dangers and risks of smoke inhalation and other toxic fumes. Um, I think well, the obvious that, one, of course, is strangulation, but short of that, what? Well, I think that the, the most serious uh, problem, obviously, is oxygen delivery to the lungs. Mm -hmm. And um, you also, with regular smoke inhalation, get carbon monoxide poisoning, mm -hmm. which has a great affinity for the red cells as opposed to oxygen. So you have to remove people from the source of smoke, obviously, and you have to deliver oxygen to them. You also have to worry about burns uh, involving the whole upper respiratory tract, which uh, can be a major problem. So if you were to see individuals coming out of smoke with their hair you know, singed mm -hmm. and their hairs in their nose burned or they have burns in their mouth, you can be assured that they may have burns in the lower respiratory mm. tract as well, and they have to be in a hospital environment. Dr. Lamb, this is Dana Tyler. What about the toxic potential of what these people are breathing in? Yeah, uh, once again, I'm, I'm not exactly certain what all the toxic fumes uh, are present in the area. I know that there are certain... Plastic was said to be some. Right. Mm -hmm. And these, what these fumes do is they can injure the lung cells themselves, called the alveoli, which are the, the air exchange cells of the lung. And when they are injured, they start to weep, in a sense, and mm -hmm. fluid can fill up into the lung which will reduce the ability of oxygen to be delivered you know, to our body. It's and sort of a chemical asthma. It's a, exactly right. It's a chemical injury to the lung itself that can be delayed. You may not see the effects right away. The effects may be hours later. And so pa patients or individuals who are having an inordinate amount of coughing or wheezing mm -hmm. or shortness of breath um, clearly have to be in a health environment that uh, they can monitor their lung function. Well, doctor, what about people who are, let's say, discharged within the next hour from smoke inhalation and they go home and tonight they suddenly find themselves coughing very hard and having difficulty breathing? What should they do? Well, you know, clearly they have to contact their doctor or they have to go back to an emergency room if they're having a breathing problems. It wouldn't be terribly surprising if they were to be simply coughing because there's an irritant effect. Mm -hmm. Now, it's important to understand that you can actually pass out from coughing excessively. Mm -hmm. So I would caution people when they do cough mm -hmm. not to sort of try to cough so vigorously. Can, you can actually pass out just from that, not mm -hmm. to necessarily be worried about that. Mm -hmm. Dr. Lamb, this is Frank Field. Uh, That's right. We've been seeing pictures all afternoon of people coming out blackened faces uh -huh. and the experience has been they've gone down stairwells it's not hot smoke they're breathing obviously it gets up to the 90th floor it's just a black soot and smoke and they have this terrible irritation is that a serious problem for those folks who have experienced that well, it, it would be more of a problem if they already had underlying lung problems, mm -hmm. if they had emphysema or if they were chronic smokers that already have a certain level of uh, carbon monoxide in their blood, if they have asthma, if they have cystic fibrosis, if they have any of these other underlying lung problems, this would clearly exacerbate, make worse, um, you know, their underlying lung condition. If they have no underlying lung disease but have gotten a sufficient amount of smoke inhaled, uh, they are clearly at that risk of, of, of uh, sh short-term injury and, mm -hmm. and, and need to be monitored, obviously. What kind of treatment do people with smoke inhalation get in the emergency room? M most of the time they're given oxygen. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that, that's the main treatment because you want to try to displace the common monoxide mm -hmm. uh, from the red cells, and the way you do that is with oxygen. If it's a very, very severe carbon monoxide poisoning, which can be, you can actually measure carbon monoxide levels, mm -hmm. you can actually give people hyperbaric, high-pressure oxygen. Uh, fortunately, that's not very common, but we, we primarily worry also about the irritant injury to the lung and the trachea mm -hmm. so that, uh, you know, people don't suffocate or, 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 or have so much inflammation or burns that they can't breathe. Well, Dr. Your, I'm sorry, go ahead, Dr. Lamb, some people might have left feeling fine, they think. Right. Uh, could there be latent effects? There, there certainly can be delayed effects. Uh, as I said, you know, you may develop sort of a chemical injury mm -hmm. which, which can be delayed by hours. Mm -hmm. And so these individuals, if they go home tonight, and start to wheeze or start to have shortness of breath, uh, really need to contact their doctor or probably just return to an emergency room environment. 
a lot of people will be anxious, so we don't want to sort of unnecessarily worry individuals. Mm -hmm. A little bit of coughing um, is not a problem, but should, should an individual really feel short of breath? What about people who have a history of heart disease? Well, when, once again, you know, heart, the, the, if you have heart disease, the problem is an oxygen transport, an oxygen delivery as a result of the fact that the, the heart is a muscle and it's just not pumping well enough. The injury that, we're, that you're seeing right now is actually to the lung. So if you already have a little bit of a heart problem and you add a little bit of a lung problem, mm -hmm. you'll simply make the situation a little bit worse. Mm -hmm. But the smoke is not really injuring the heart, although theoretically, uh, you know, if you drop the oxygen content in the blood, you can induce some coronary artery disease. So if somebody, let's say, has, has angina, um, you know, uh, if you drop their oxygen level, you may induce some chest pain and, mm -hmm. and some heart injury. You said that the first thing you do in the emergency room is you give the people oxygen right away. Right. How much oxygen does the hospital keep on supply? We've had hundreds of people coming into a hospital. Well, How many it, tanks are there? You know, that, that's a very good question. Each of the, you know, hospitals are, are different, but, you know, clearly there's a capacity that they, that they each have. Mm -hmm. I think what, what normally will, would be done would be you would evaluate each individual. You might measure their carbon monoxide level, and you can actually measure their oxygen level in their blood and know which patients really are having a problem that would need oxygen supplementation. Not everybody would would need it necessarily. Dr. Lamb, thank you very, very much for your time and for your thoughts, for your advice and your help. Appreciate it very much. Let's go back to Channel 2's Lisa Castleman on the street outside with somebody who just made it down. Lisa? Yes, that's right, M Michelle. I'm with Debbie Matucci. She happens to work for CBS. Dr. She's a, a transmitter employee. She came uh, down just a little while ago. She's on her way to the hospital because she's pregnant. Debbie, uh, what happened to you? Well, first of the, there was the explosion and then we stayed on the air for a while. And um, we started smelling smoke. We tried to cover up the doors, um, but smoke kept coming in anyway. Um, then after about an hour, our electricity totally went, and the smoke started coming in worse. The police came up. Um, then they had the, the uh, roof open. So, um, so you we were okay to go at the there. top, aren't you? Yeah, we're right at the top on the 110th floor. And um, so when they opened the roof, I was able to go upstairs. We were all able to go upstairs and breathe some better air. Um, there's still some other guys from other stations up there. The police um, uh, had some other policemen repel down the first time with, uh, to, to get some rescue efforts. Um, then they were able to land because there's antennas and everything else up there. They took lights off and, and antennas off. And so we were, you know, then they landed and I left. How many of you were up there at the time? There were, from the different stations, there were eight of us. And how many uh, with CBS? There were two of us, myself and Isaiah Rivera. So I hope we get to meet the people who actually put us on the air. Uh, certainly glad that you're okay. Uh, what's going to happen to you now? You said you were going to the hospital. I'm going to the hospital to get checked out and make sure everything's okay. I had some smoke inhalations. I coughed up some stuff. And um, I also have asthma, so I just want to make sure everything's okay. Um, you know, I'm still in dangerous day. I wanted to let everybody know that I'm okay because there were early reports that I had gotten down and I wasn't down. I was still up there, but now I'm down on the ground and I'm going to the hospital uh, and I'm just, I'm okay. Good. Good. Okay. And did you say before that you were pregnant? Yes, I am. Uh, How many months? I'm um, 11 weeks. Uh, so it's early and it's a dangerous period for miscarriage. So I'm really, I'm worried. Lisa. I'm glad you're okay. Yes, I, uh, I have a question. Give her yeah. our well wishes, Frank Field and Dana mm -hmm. Tyler and myself that uh, we're happy for Debbie. And also, could you ask her, did she come, I, I'm not clear about this, did she come down via helicopter? How did she Sorry, get down? There's a lot of distortion in the audio. Okay, and I okay. Really, all right. How did she get down, Lisa? How did she get down, Okay, Lisa? She, uh, we'd like to know if you could describe a little bit more of how you got down. Were you rescued or did you just walk down? No, we were rescued. I was rescued. They, they, they actually, on the top of the, of the roof of One World Trade Center, they have a lot of the antennas and the microwave antennas and, and the antennas for the different um, yes. radios for the mm -hmm. ambulances and police and state police. What they actually, and, and the lights for the How power. did they get you out? What actually happened, they took the lights off, they unbolted them, they took the antennas down, and they landed a helicopter onto the roof. And um, so, you know, they, they brought me over into the helicopter, I went in the helicopter, and they brought me down in the wow. helicopter. What was the ride like? I was airlifted to safety. I was, yes, I was airlifted to safety. 
Because we weren't sure what it was like if we went down. So. What was it like being taken away like that, knowing you were already coughing, but that you were being rescued? What did it feel like at the time? It, it felt really good. I felt very relieved. Um, the first time that I had, that I had seen the helicopter come down, uh, and it didn't actually land, and then I saw it go away. I felt like, you know, we all felt, actually, we were talking, it felt like, there goes our airlift, there goes our rescue. Mm -hmm. And then when they came back and actually landed, um, I felt much better, and so did everybody else, knowing that they could land up there right. and, right. and take us away. Uh, Lisa. A lot of relief. Lisa? The, yes. They were able to land by cutting away the antennae and the lights, right? How many yes, other people came down? Stop them. How many people came down with Debbie? Sorry, there's a lot of interruption here. I'm sorry, Lisa. I'm sorry. Hi, who else did you come with uh, from uh, in in the chopper? I, I was the only one that they brought down. Mm. I brought I was brought down first because of my condition and. Do you know about the other ones and if they're still there? I, I still don't know. I, I have a radio and I can't get through maybe because of the interference and everything. But um, with Isaiah, <laughs> he's got the other hand, so. I don't, I don't, actually don't know what's going on. Were they able to talk to you on the chopper about what, where they'd go after they brought you down? Yeah. Yeah, they told me that um, they'd bring me to the ambulance and they'd bring me to an area where there was a doctor and then um, to the hospital if I wanted. And where were they going to go? Back up to get the others? Uh, uh, well, they, um, from what I understand, they um, dropped off more Scott packs and they dropped off more people. Um, up there, I know they when when they brought the when they landed, they dropped off people from Otis Elevator, and I, I assume that's to get everything going up there because that's where all the uh, mechanical equipment is for the elevators. Yeah. So uh, I assume that's what they're going to do. Is they're they're going to pick everybody up and bring them down yeah. in the uh, helicopters? I really don't know. All right, Debbie. Well, thank you very much for joining us. I'm glad you're okay, and uh, certainly a pleasure to meet someone who worked so hard to get us. <laughs> On the air. Uh, that's it from the team down here, too. Look at that smile. Debbie, we wish you what all a story. the luck in the what world. What a story. You know, to say that there's a happiness there from Debbie Matus getting rescued by helicopter from the top of the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. But I keep thinking about the unknown numbers of people that are so trapped still trapped down there. below in the rubble. We'll yeah, but the good part the of work. it now is they've landed people above yeah, and below, and they, now they're all together going up and down. I mean, so still I still have think that the sad of it side over. with which to deal. Of course, I wouldn't want to be trapped up yeah. there and with all the unknowns no, waiting for help. Right now on the telephone, Channel 2's John Flattery. John, where are you? I'm at uh, St. Vincent's Hospital uh, at 11th Street, and this is where there have been uh, 60 patients brought this afternoon. This hospital is in a full disaster alert, uh, what they call a stage three institutional alert. That's the top stage of a uh, disaster alert. And that requires employees to stay, uh, employees who will take care of family members of those injured and also secure supplies. The, uh, the administrator of the hospital and the, uh, chief, uh, the chief medical man here both say that uh, 60 patients have been uh, admitted and uh, they expect there to be more. Uh, most of them are for smoke inhalation. Uh, however, one is on a respirator, uh, one has suffered cardiac arrest, one a fractured skull, and uh, one of the patients brought here died at 2.30 this afternoon. Uh, we are told uh, unofficially that there have been two who have died, one of whom has been brought uh, here to St. Vincent's. Now, they, they say that of the uh, 60 people who have brought here, uh, that while most of them are suffering from smoke inhalation, they believe that perhaps half that number could be released by tonight, uh, but they're not quite sure of the extent of the injuries right now. Uh, in addition to treating these patients for smoke inhalation, they also have to test them for the possibility of any uh, burning that might have occurred to the upper respiratory system. So that's what a lot of these people are being checked for now. Uh, patients are still coming in by ambulance in dribs and drabs, and uh, at this point, at this hospital, 60 patients, they expect more. That's it, Jim. John, thank John. you very much. Uh, Dana? Earlier, uh, Mary Murphy told us 106 taken to Beekman, Beekman. downtown. And, I guess uh, they're all in stage three. Right, <laughs> bringing in all the extra people. Right now, Channel 2's Ren Scott is on Church Street with another live report for us, Ren. Is it, um, well, Dana, we are, uh, we are on the east side of the building, and uh, we don't have anything quite as dramatic as somebody coming out in a helicopter. But if you look behind me here, you can see that people three hours after this explosion are still slowly streaming out of the building. Uh, everybody seems to have a story to tell. One of the more interesting stories we heard was from a man who came down from the 107th floor. He walked the entire way. Uh, coming down the stairway, he had to take his shirt off uh, and give it to a woman. He had to uh, 
to moisten the shirt and put it over the mouth of a pregnant woman because she was having a real struggle up there. We also talked to a group of people who said uh, as they came down from about the 90th floor, they got on the 51st floor where they decided to break some windows. Now, I know there's been an awful lot of controversy about what was the right and the wrong thing to do, but these people tell me they broke somewhere between 14 and 18 windows, and uh, they think it might have saved their lives. They said they were really starting to panic. Uh, once they broke, in, broke the windows open, they got some fresh air there. They said they all felt a lot better, and uh, even more importantly, they all calmed down at that point. Now, we talked to some people. I think we're going to start with a gentleman who walked all the way from the 107th floor. Here's what he had to say. Uh, and, and then as we got down into the, uh, into the, I guess it was around the 60s, we had to stop and the lights went out. And when the lights went out, everybody panicked. There was a lot of standing and it didn't seem like there was a lot of people taking charge. There was, but nobody knew any officials. Yeah. So I finally yelled out. I said, who are you? You know, tell us to go back. Who are you? And he said, it was before 40. So I finally felt like everything was okay, you know? Now you're going to hear an offer, a, a lot of historic or heroic uh, stories about what people yeah. have done on their way out, but uh, when you hear people coming from the 107th floor, what all those people are telling us is that they were calm all the way down. People helped one another. No one seemed to panic. At times, they couldn't see their hands in front of their faces. They just slowly walked down these stairwells. But everybody seemed to be calm, and everybody seemed to help one another. And uh, as they come out here, uh, you start to talk to them, and they tell their story. And uh, the people down here are waiting to hear it. They're tremendous stories. They are uh, they're amazing stories. But for these folks, they say it was just a thing to do, and one story is just more amazing than the other. Uh, that's the situation going out here. As I said, people are slowly just streaming out of the building. Uh, they seem very calm, very relaxed. And there are some absolutely amazing stories to tell. That's what's happening down here Grand. on the east side of the tower. Let's go back to the Grand. studio. Thank you. I suppose over the next few days we're going to hear More. hundreds of stories of heroism. More stories. Now we'll go to the newsroom and Michelle Marsh. All right, Jim, here's the latest we have from the newsroom. And forgive me if I am reiterating anything that uh, you have already said. Our information on the exact location of the explosion, official word says uh, the location of the explosion was lower level B2 under the World Trade Center. A lot of parking garages there, reportedly a lot of cars uh, were destroyed in the explosion. Now, we have just learned that a kindergarten field trip from PS95 in Gravesend, Brooklyn, was visiting the observation deck today. Of the five classes that went, only three have returned. Fifty children are still unaccounted for. Channel 2 News has just spoken to the principal of the school, James Filatro. He has just spoken to one of the teachers at the World Trade Center. And his report from that teacher is that one class is on the 107th floor in the cafeteria in building number two. The other class may be in an elevator also in building two. Now, we've had a lot of parents uh, waiting at the school. Of course, they're very worried. Uh, they've been calling uh, the newsroom as well. There is no cause for alarm right now, certainly no cause for alarm. The evacuation is continuing. We have also gotten a report just moments ago that everyone has been removed from the observation deck. Uh, it's a chaotic situation, as you know. We're going to try to bring you the very latest on the situation, especially the very latest on these very young children and where they are. And as soon as we know that they're safe, we're going to get word to you right away. Back to Jim and Dana. Okay. Thanks, Michelle. That's just it just shows you, people said we have no idea at this point how many people are still trapped there. On the telephone from Con Edison is Pat Ricciardi. Pat, uh, let's get to the, the cause of this. Can you shed some light on that? No, we really can't, uh, except to say that it does not to appear to have originated any, in any Con Ed equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in fact, we, are, uh, we have a plan, along with the Port Authority, to begin re-energizing cables. Uh, they have opened all their switches so that we can bring the electricity to the door, so to speak, and let them open doors down the way as uh, you know, open switches and allow the power to flow in after they inspect equipment, you know, as they see fit. At this point, though, there is still no electrical power to the World Trade Center building. No, there is still no electrical power, but we do have the prospect uh, of um, some restoration. But again, what we will be doing is re-energizing cables, but not actually restoring power inside mm -hmm. the buildings. Mm -hmm. That's going to be up to the Port Authority to open the internal switches after they've inspected their own internal equipment, which I, I would think would be a fairly gradual process. 
they could probably tell you, tell you more about it than we can. Do you know if there was any transformer involvement involved at all? Uh, I do not know. Um, I does not appear we have any. Uh, there are, of course, transformers that belong to PATH. PATH is mm -hmm. a separate electrical system, has its own internal distribution system, and I believe it's fed out of somewhere in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. But they may still have some other transformers in, you know, within, their, within or near their station. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pat Bichardi of Con Ed, thank you very, very much for your thoughts and your time this afternoon. Okay. Okay. I was going to ask Pat oh, whether, sorry, how long sorry. it would take to, to restore it, because obviously the first aim is... Get, get those elevators going because they've got the repair people from Otis. They landed them on the rooftop, and those elevator repair yeah, people. Well, supposedly, one going. class of those youngsters may be in one of those stuck elevators. That's call. true. From Gravesend, yeah. PS95. Okay. Now to Ren Scott at Church Street with the story of another survivor. Ren. Well, Jim, uh, I have someone here that I think you're going to want to meet in person. Uh, about three hours ago, you spoke to this gentleman, John Cuneo, when oh. he was trapped oh, yeah. on the oh. first floor. <laughs> well, uh, three oh. hours later, our good friend John Cuneo oh, has good. made it out. See him. That's good. And uh, as you can imagine, it's been uh, it's been quite a trip from the 51st floor. John, why don't you, uh, first I'd like you to say hello to Dana and Jim in person. This is the guy you're talking to. Uh, tell us about your story. What took you three hours well, to get Dana out? Dana and Jim, and I'd like to tell my brother. I've made it out here, and Mom and Dad, I'm okay. Okay. And uh, it's been a pretty harrowing experience. I just want to thank everyone who helped rescue us. And I want to say there are a lot of wonderful people that are still coming down the, the stairwells now. The fire departments reached the 51st floor about a half an hour ago. Mm -hmm. And there are people coming down on wheelchairs. Uh, this fire department with oxygen tents there. They ate everyone. Everything's orderly and calm. And it's good to be out breathing fresh air. Mm. Now that you're out here uh, in the fresh air with your feet on the ground, try to take us back to the mindset three hours ago when you were trapped on the 51st floor and you were talking to the folks in the studio. Okay, what happened was I was working on my computer around noontime when I heard this tremendous thud and we realized it was an explosion or something unnatural had happened. For the first half an hour, we stayed around trying to gather information on what had happened outside the office building. Then smoke started seeping up through the elevator shaft into the office area. We realized it was time to evacuate. What's going through your mind at this point, though? Were you really fearing for your life, or were you just thinking, I had to keep Actually, calm? Actually, I felt pretty safe by the windowsill. But my worst thoughts were on the people that were trapped below and looking out onto West Street, where the Winter Palace is, and hearing reports on the radio and thinking of the people that are trapped down there. I just felt very lucky and very fortunate that nothing happened to me initially in the explosion. We are certainly glad uh, that you're out of the building. We appreciate you talking to us uh, three hours ago. And uh, Jim and Dana, uh, we all like stories with happy him. endings. Uh, anything you'd like me to relate John, to your old friend? John, it's good to see you. You're yes. looking very well. How does he feel, Ren? How does he feel physically? Okay, I, I, I can't hear what's going on back okay. in the studio. How uh, does he feel? Okay, I'm getting Have a good night's rest, The question John. Is, uh, is how do you feel now that you're, you're here with your feet on the ground? I really feel mm -hmm. it. It's incredible. I just I'm not lost the words. It's, yeah. it's shocking when you see the damages and the, the window shattered. And you seem like you're a little bit in shock. You're yes. still shaking and uh, and going from one thing to another. Well, to comprehend when you look down and you're watching this unfold and you see hundreds of ambulances and police cars all on West Street and you know that guys are going down below and you don't know what's down there and you're all the way up there and the smoke's coming there. You're trying to pray to God that they'll put out the fire so the smoke won't come up and get anyone. John, it's great to see you safe and sound, and uh, I'm glad you got your feet on the ground. Thank you. Take a deep breath, and uh, let's hope there's an awful lot more stories like this. Uh, everybody who's coming down, be it from the 20th floor or from the 107th floor, uh, it has been a long, long struggle, and, uh, and I think everybody... out there, and there are a lot of people, you know, the handicapped coming down on wheelchairs, and just my fellow office workers were heroic going out, finding people that were trapped in the elevators to relay the word to me, and a lot of people did a lot more work than I did. And, God bless them all. Good deal. Wonderful. Well, uh, just one more story, but I thought this is one gentleman oh, yes. you'd really like to meet. He's oh, a hear that. Good selection, you know. You hear so many stories about how things go wrong in this town, the bad mm -hmm. things that people do to each other. And here we have an example where thousands were doing great things for each other. Good to see John. He does look shook up. And he spoke of the terror. Just imagine everybody in that building had to have that terror Experience. clutching at their throat trying to come down, wondering what was going to happen next. Some people are still up there. Yes. Scott Salem is on the phone with us. He's on the 107th floor. Scott, any idea when you'll be able to get out? I have no idea. Uh, we, we're, we're still up here. 
There's there's no lights, electricity, everything's off. We have no water at all. Um, someone told us about putting some water on towels. Um, we don't we don't have any, any any water. The smoke just started to get thicker, and it's coming up now. Now the smoke is thicker at this point, and, still. Well, up here at least it is. Uh, are you having difficulty breathing, John? Scott? Yes. Hello. Are you having difficulty breathing? Well, there's a, a, a pregnant woman uh, who, who works with us up here, and, and she is basically uh, near the window. Uh, we, we did break the window uh, because a lot of people were panicking. So, uh, What are you doing for her? Uh, well, we, we put it down on, on the floor, and she's, uh, she's breathing. She's just, uh, she's just very nervous, mm -hmm. and... Uh, you think it's panic or, or actually smoke? I, I, think it, problem. I think it's panic. She's, she's basically in the safest part of the office, uh, in, in the corner, on the floor. Um, and just basically, uh, everyone just started basically getting to a panic shortly because it's, uh, it's been a while now. Scott, Scott, has anybody been there, any emergency type person been there to let you know? what to do or when you would be out of there have you seen anyone no we, have, we haven't seen anybody at all nobody okay. you mean there are there are rescue workers who have come down on the roof and they've, they've been sure going it's down the same building ah okay different building captain Absolutely. curry in the bronx if you're watching this we have a problem with 107th floor scott salem we're talking to him now he says there's a uh, a pregnant woman who's having trouble breathing. And How about no getting that special number? Yet. Scott, what, what building are you in? Number two? Yes, number two. Number two, World Trade. Uh, any idea of people on uh, surrounding floors? Are they getting out? I mean, um, to be honest with you, I, I, I don't know. We, the, the, as I said, the, the, the smoke is thickening um, from our front doors. We, we just started to put down some... Uh, towels and some clothing underneath mm -hmm. the door to block it off. Mm -hmm. um, basically what we did also is uh, we, we did have to break the window open um, and it, the main concern is that a lot of people now are, uh, are in, a, in a panic. It was How many to, people do you have up there? We have 35 employees. Well, Scott, the... Scott, we're going to try to get help to you. We have a special number. Uh, we'll have our control room call and alert the fire people of what's happening on your floor, 107th floor. Can the control room here get yeah. through to them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tell them to calm down. We're going to try to get help to them. Okay. The, the fires are out. There's no... And, and Is that number for him to call? 999... Yes. What is that number? 333. 999-3333. Have you got it? Nine 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 three 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 three. three, three, three. three. Right. Call, Call that right. number. Tell them where you are. Tell them how many people are up there. And the problem is you're getting more smoke. They'll try to get some Scott Pack, some oxygen to you, and get you out. You said that the, the fires are out now. The yes. fires are officially. We've heard all the fires are out. All you're getting is residue smoke that's still coming up from the underground. Oh, okay. Because that's. Because we just all of a sudden just got a, an abundance of smoke coming up. It could very well be that somebody has opened some shafts and doors and windows that allowed that to come up, that venting, allowed that to get up venting. to you, to vent the smoke, and you're in a spot where you're getting that vented smoke. Call 999-3333. Okay, I will do. If the phone is busy, keep at it, but oh, also add, Frank, that to the 999 is also 2222. Right. Okay, repeat that, Jim. Oh. 999 3333 We better stay with just with this number, not confuse it. Okay. Is there anything we can do uh, for, the, for the pregnant woman? We don't really know any way we can help her besides trying to keep her calm. Are you getting a lot of smoke to where you are? Uh, yeah, she's in the safest part of the office, though. Is there a window open here? Did you break a window Yeah, we, here? we did. We, we, we had to break a window. Okay, okay. Getting fine. Out. You may be getting some of the smoke in because of the backdraft. It's pulling it in from the hallway. Uh, are you in a large open area? Uh, pretty much, pretty much. All right, that's a problem. Is there a smaller area that you can get into that you could lock off? Uh, yes, there is. Okay, we've just been told that the, the fire folks have the call. They're on their way up to you. They heard this. Tell the lady, lie on the floor. The smoke is leased there. Get a, if you can get something over her face, some, uh, maybe a, a, some cloth, some material, a, a, a jacket, she can breathe through it and relax, tell her they're on their way, they'll be up there very shortly. Okay. Okay? i just like to say to my wife, Allison, I'm okay and everything's all right here, basically. All right. You're going to be fine. You'll all be right. fine. They'll be there very shortly. They have you, and you've got good control of yourself. Thank you very much. God bless you. Okay.
good, 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 what good. Story. I'm glad that uh, How many fire more department stories have to be told? Well, Michelle told us about those uh, two classes from uh, Gravesend, Ninety-five, yes, Brooklyn. ninety-five. Right, fifty children, and at last word, one class had been in an upper-level cafeteria. Another possibly, maybe in the elevator. Possibly in an elevator. They got fifty missing youngsters. Yeah. But they're fine. Yeah, they're going to be all right. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Just now we still have though that we still have the matter that we haven't heard about of the people trapped down below in the B section, B two or B three, uh, when the explosion occurred, and they're trapped under under uh, smashed concrete and steel beams and can't get out, and no one knows uh, their condition, and they can't even get to them yet. We, now for more, I'm sorry, Dan. I'm just going to say we've heard the stories of heroism, the yes. pregnant woman get being rescued on the roof, help is on the way to Scott, but there are some sad numbers to this story today. Uh, let's go to Michelle Marsh in the newsroom with an update on injuries and fatalities. Michelle? All right, Dana, uh, once more an update for you on these uh, children in the kindergarten class, 50 of them unaccounted for. Uh, they were on a field trip to the observation deck today. Five classes went on this field trip. Uh, three uh, came back. Two were unaccounted for. The children are from PS95 in Graves and Brooklyn. Uh, the principal, James Filatro, uh, spoke to one of the teachers who managed to call him from the World Trade Center. That teacher says that one of the kindergarten classes is in the cafeteria of Building 2 on the 107th floor. The 107th floor is, is the focus of a lot of attention right now. Uh, there are no reported injuries in that group. Again, parents listening, there are no reported injuries in that group. Now, the other class is believed to be in an elevator. They are waiting for help. We have no reports of any injuries right now from that group. We also have reports that people on the observation deck have uh, been brought down to safety. Now, Jim and Dana, maybe you can confirm this to me, uh, for me. Uh, to our knowledge, the observation deck is on the 107th floor. Therefore, there could be a possibility that the children in the cafeteria on the 107th floor might possibly be uh, down now on the ground and safe and sound. And if uh, you know any more than that, uh, let us know, and we're continuing to follow that story for you. Back to you. Hey, thanks, Michelle. Uh, this happened at 12.18 this afternoon. More than 150 people injured as you look at some of the videotapes. See the face there. Yes. The, the black, that's a live picture there. of Somebody still at this hour, people are still being rescued. The soot, the smoke they inhaled. Uh, I'm sure the number's much higher than that. Well, there's several point. thousand people occupied that building. We have been told of two fatalities. Some, most of the injuries are not serious, though, but there is a lot of unknown at yes. this point. And now we have, I believe, some uh, tape of an uh, interview with one of the first firefighters to arrive at the scene shortly after the explosion. If we can see that now. The floor here. seems to have exploded down and collapsed into the level below that. And when we got down there, we got down about, I would say, three, four hundred feet in. Well, we were met by a man coming out, uh, severely injured. I don't know how he lived. I don't know how he lived. Where was he coming from? I don't know. <laughs> Anybody else down there? Uh, I don't know. They just We pulled another guy out later on. Seven engine pulled a man out later on, and they're still searching. And that was pretty smoky and... and uh, it was really nasty. A lot of cars on fire. A lot of steam pipes exploded and broke. A lot of walls collapsed down. It was a mess. <laughs> a very grim scene he has described. That was one of the first firefighters to arrive on the scene following the explosion. And it's down in that area where we still have reports of people being trapped in the rubble. The uh, ceiling over the path train platform collapsed, at least part of it collapsed. And some people were reportedly were trapped under that record, just how many we don't know. And there are also other areas down there, various floors that um, contain maintenance shops, mm -hmm. uh, machine shops, etc., electrician shops, plumbing shops where uh, over almost 100 people were employed, and they were on their lunch hour at the time when the explosion occurred, and, but they were on duty nonetheless, and some of them were trapped inside those various shops, and we don't know the number, and certainly we don't know the condition. I would assume that right now they're still trying to get at them. Uh, we did talk to one worker before who was able to, to crawl out. He said about 75 feet he crawled till they got to an exit, and got himself out safely, and he described the scene of utter chaos and pandemonium and, and terror, which you might expect. And he reported seeing a 
terrible flash coming from the vicinity of the parking garage where we have word that many, many automobiles have been demolished. And of course, it leads to the question of where exactly did that explosion occur? What blew up a car or a transformer? Some people have talked about hearing two explosions. Yes, yes. People in a building across the street, we spoke with Elizabeth Williams earlier today, who said she, who said she felt the vibrations yes. from across the street. So this is widespread. Let's go to Brian Williams right now. He is, uh, where are you, Brian? Down uh, on the street. I so. am still uh, Top of between uh, World Trade Center number four and World Trade Center number five. Uh, again, uh, we are coming on the air to report that sources tell Channel 2 News this was the result of an explosive device. Uh, no one is using the word uh, bomb as far as terminology right now. Uh, draw your own uh, conclusions. Uh, it is an unofficial word. Uh, again, sources telling Channel 2 News this was the result of an explosive device causing all this. It would explain a lot. We are told the FBI terrorist response team is here on site. Earlier, I saw two members of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, a division of the U.S. Department of Treasury. Uh, so it would explain some of the response we've seen today. They obviously have to look at all angles. And when you get Con Ed, the NYPD, the NYFD together uh, and look at things, and everyone says it wasn't us, it wasn't us, it wasn't a transformer, this evidently led investigators to uh, this conclusion. Again, uh, this is from uh, sources uh, telling Channel 2 News an explosive device uh, is what started all this uh, today, all these uh, many injuries and the uh, fatalities. Back to you in the studio. Well, in the past, I know that that's shocking news. Mm -hmm. uh, it's difficult to react to, except that uh, terrorist organizations have said in the past that one day they would bring their acts of terrorism to these shores. I'm not going to say which groups, that's for sure, because you can't, you can't you accuse, know. you know, no allegations, but uh, that terrorism hasn't come here before has surprised a lot of people in view mm. of what's happening around the world. But we don't, and we don't know that, right. that it's terrorism at all, because the sources have told the Channel 2 News that an explosive device of some kind Let's move on to a Beekman Downtown Hospital. Mary Murphy is there where, at last count, more than 100 people had been taken there for treatment. Mary? Well, Dana, I'm with Dr. Chris Freiberg. He's the acting director of the emergency room at Beekman Downtown Hospital. We were told at last count there were 104 patients here. Doctor, I just want to know, what are the status of the people here? Everyone who's arrived through our disaster planning and emergency services is in stable condition. Uh, we've had no deaths and nobody's in critical condition at this time. You know, Channel 2 News just reported, doctor, that it may have been an explosive device. They believe it was a, an explosive device that caused this disaster at the World Trade Center. I'm just wondering, are you amazed that the injuries you've seen here uh, weren't more serious? I actually heard initially from the first few people who arrived here that they thought it was an explosive device. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised to hear that. Mm -hmm. The people who uh, were directly subjected to the explosion mm -hmm. are not seriously hurt, and it is amazing. I know there were some broken bones, perhaps about 25 people had smoke inhalation. That's what I was told. Is there an updated figure oh, on that? Oh, yeah, I'd say more like 75 smoke inhalation. Mm -hmm. uh, broken bones were quite at a minimum. I can think of three patients that I know with broken bones from this. And then some lacerations and people getting stitches on their heads from tiles falling down on them, chunks of concrete. That's, that's right. Well, you I'm mentioned about the explosive device. Uh, one of the first patients who came in, he came in with a paramedic from downtown hospital, and the paramedic did speak to us, Mr. Lee, and he told us the man claimed that a car had exploded in a sub-level garage in the World Trade Center and that the force of the explosion had pretty much thrown him out of the building. And then we heard that there was an explosion felt on the 31st floor by a woman who was cooking lunch on, the, on that level. You wonder if the explosion could have traveled up an elevator shaft. It was, apparently the force was felt very, very high up. Um, we think at this time that there was only one explosion mm -hmm. and the rest was reverber reverberations of the, the initial explosion. We also saw, Doctor, at one point that police vans were bringing oxygen tanks from other parts. Did you run out of oxygen? No, we, we all had a good steady supply of oxygen. We were prepared for this type of disaster. And uh, I don't know of any police cars arriving with oxygen. Uh, from the 13th precinct, they came before. Maybe they did. Maybe they did. 
But you're okay in terms of personnel. We understand you have about a third of your personnel, at least, working just in the emergency area, and that the cafeteria has been converted into a makeshift emergency room. That's correct. Uh, there's been a great response to this disaster, and everybody's doing an extremely good job. I'm very proud of the entire effort um, everybody's put in uh, for this particular disaster. It's just wonderful to see the hospital come together and, and work out like this. How are you able to accommodate so many emergency patients at one time? We were ready. Uh, the reports came over the radio that there were going to be a lot of people for this one. The, our count was more like 115 patients through here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just made space for them. We've converted the cafeteria. Uh, and they're holding approximately 30 patients in there. Mm -hmm. And we've made room upstairs. And patients, more seriously ill, were brought directly upstairs to okay. intensive care. And their care is not suffering as a result of what you have to deal with down here? Not at all. Everybody's in stable and good condition, doing very well considering the scope of this disaster. Well, going back to Jim, just about that explosive device that we think caused this. You're right, several years ago there was a lot of anxiety here in New York City with threats coming from various drug cartels. We don't know, as you mentioned, if that's what caused this, but over the years terrorist organizations have used these bombs to make their point. Um, obviously, I will be trying to get in contact with some police sources I have to see if we can update you on what exactly happened and if indeed the explosion was rooted in that garage in the basement level of the World Trade Center. Jim and Dana. Well, we just I've heard been from in uh, countries where they uh, where they have to deal with un with exploding devices and mm -hmm. it's a terrible situation in which to live. And I dearly hope this hasn't come now to this city to these shores. Oh, me too. We uh, heard from a firefighter moments ago who had just come out from uh, one of the garages and talked about how bad the damage was. Cars destroyed yes. by fire. Uh, also saw a severely injured man on his way up. I mean, where the most damage is, you have to wonder, is that the source of it? Yes. Is exactly. that the That's source? That's what you look at. That's what you look at. And the doctor was talking about uh, an explosive device. And doctors have a way of uh, telling from wounds somehow how they occurred. He said he knew right from the onset mm -hmm. that it was an explosive device. But uh, what kind of explosive device? Uh, was it in a car? Was it outside? We don't, there, we don't there are more that. unanswered questions. Again, we've got to be careful with this. Sources tell Channel yeah. 2 News this. We have not yet confirmed this yet. A uh, lot of stories. People coming down. Yeah, we have one. I'm just yeah. told. We have, I think we have someone who, I don't know if it's a man or woman, who got out. Was it the man who got out and had a kind of a harrowing tale to tell? Let's hear that. What happened? We walked down to the uh, 48th uh, floor and uh, found an, a corner office. We broke the windows. Uh, there was a split of opinion as to whether we should break the windows, but we broke two two windows that helped a little bit, but smoke uh, poured out uh, a bit from those, uh, from those windows. Uh, and uh, we stayed there for a long period of time. There was a pregnant uh, woman uh, who, who was quite uh, concerned. Uh, there wasn't massive uh, panic, but uh, people were, were very, very concerned. Panic is a word that we've oh. heard, that there has not been massive panic. A lot of people helping each other. But in some of those situations in the stairwells, uh, smoke-filled stairwells coming down more than 100 floors. Can you imagine how difficult it would be coming down a darkened staircase full of smoke, you can't breathe, and trying to fight the panic mm -hmm. that is in you mm -hmm. to keep yourself under control? how difficult that's got to be. Well, earlier, you know, you mentioned about the docker, uh, the telltale clues about mm -hmm. explosives. We heard something like that, you may remember. Yes. Remember, was that gentleman, Vita? Vito? Vito. Vito the Long. Yes. Yes. That's right. He was he, one of the workers there. Right. There. And Mary uh, Murphy had interviewed him, right. and he, she said, what happened? He said this terrible concussion, she, and he had blown his ear. Yes. Mm -hmm. and it was bleeding through the ear. Now, that's a concussive device that's or right. some sort of a concussion. Now, whether... Of course, a Transformers explosion could do that. Also. I don't know whether there would be that much of a concussion. I don't either. I don't either, but it's, it's, it's interesting to speculate. He said he saw a sheet of flame coming out of the of the area of the parking garage a sheet of flame followed by the explosion and it blew his eardrums right mm -hmm. exactly and, and by golly that's what it sounds like now we have um michelle marsh yes. in our newsroom with some of the latest information michelle okay dana thank you we want to 
update you on the latest now. Uh, Brian Williams uh, just reported a short time ago that sources have told us the blast might have been caused by an explosive device. The FBI is now on the scene. Officials are saying the explosion hit in the lower level of B2 of the World Trade Center. Uh, officials say two people have died. An unknown number of people still remain trapped. We have no new information for you, by the way, on the two classes of kindergarten students, uh, but parents know that evacuation efforts continue. Now, here's the latest word we have on traffic. Uh, of course, the rush hour is, is upon us. All traffic is being diverted away from the Holland Tunnel to leave the area open for emergency service workers. The Brooklyn Battery Tunnel remains closed. It's unlikely it will reopen in time for the rush hour. It's being used again for emergency vehicles. The Gowanus Expressway leading into the Prospect Expressway is closed to everyone but emergency vehicles. The FDR Drive is closed at South Ferry and is just jam-packed and hardly moving from Canal Street South. Now, the West Side Highway is closed in both directions south of Canal. Eastbound on Canal Street is packed solid from the Holland Tunnel to the Manhattan Bridge. We have reports that Chambers Street, Broadway, West Broadway are all overloaded. There is extreme gridlock south of Canal from east to west. West Street is closed from Canal Street all the way down to Battery Park. There is no path service between the World Trade Center and New Jersey. All other path trains are running with major delays. Meantime, in the subway, the numbers 1 and 9 train are bypassing Cortland Street Station. All other service is reportedly normal at this hour. We are told that four ferries are now running between the World Financial Center to Hoboken. As for city buses, all service has been suspended south of Park Row. There is no Staten Island Express bus service at all. If you need to go to Staten Island, take the ferry where you can pick up the buses. Trains out of Penn Station are running on schedule, and officials say they'll add more trains as volume dictates. Buses out of the Port Authority to New Jersey are running normally. Again, we're told more buses will be added as volume dictates. If you normally take a bus from the World Trade Center to New Jersey, you are being advised to go to the Port Authority. The ferry between Battery Park and Hoboken will run every 20 minutes until 4 o'clock. Well, it's past 4 now. Sorry about that. And from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock, it will run every 6 minutes. And that's the very latest information we have for you right now. Back to the studio. Thank you, Michelle, very much. Traffic tied up a notch. Mm -hmm. The commuting period has now begun. Uh, shadow traffic said that people should try the northernmost mm -hmm. uh, exits as possible, northernmost out of Manhattan to get to wherever they have to go and avoid the southern part of Manhattan. Stay out of that part of the town. We've got Tom Dwyer back on uh, the phone okay. from shadow traffic who can give us the latest on what's happening on the road. Tom? All right, well, Dana and Jim, uh, basically, Michelle gave you a good breviary of everything that's going on here, but let's talk, let's talk about uh, getting people out of the city, basically. Yes. Certainly, you don't want to come into the city, but if you're down in lower Manhattan wondering how to get out, the best thing for you to do is just make it as far up north as possible. If you take mass transit, you want to go with Port Authority bus terminal or possibly over to Penn Station, take the Jersey Transit trains back out uh, as far as the East River crossings go, uh, take it further up, uh, probably going to find an awful lot of delays. As a matter of fact, we are getting reports of very extensive delays going outbound at the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, Battery Tunnel, just forget about that. You can't even bother with that. Mm -hmm. uh, Manhattan Bridge or the Williamsburg Bridge, if you're headed outbound, probably a good idea at this point. Dan and Jim? Probably a um, good idea also if you are at work or something to go now. Get out early. Give yourself some extra time to head north. And Tom? The city. Yes, sir. The explosion occurred down near the path train lines into the World Trade Center. The explosion obviously was a very fierce one, very powerful one. Mm -hmm. Do you know if there's any damage to the tracks? Uh, well, basically, uh, Jim, again, everything is very sketchy, and the only thing that PATH uh, is basically telling us at this point, again, they're uh, still investigating as to what's going on, but yes. uh, they have suspended the service on the yes. PATH trains. No word, unfortunately, Jim, as to whether or not there's any damage to the tracks down there. Okay, okay. thank you, Tom. So what can we should recap now, right? Well, the explosion occurred. And 12, still, still in when you okay. 1218. 
It was lunch period for the World Trade Center. Many people were probably out of the building mm -hmm. on lunch, but many, because of the weather, snow and stayed wind, inside. cold, we stayed inside. So several thousands of people were in building number two. Is that where it occurred, right? Uh, yes, World Trade Center number, let me, I'll double check that. I'll check. I think it was number two. It was in the parking garage area where the explosion occurred. At first, uh, we thought, and for the first several hours here, we've been reporting that that uh, it was a transformer that flew. Con Ed told us, well, none of their transformers flew, so if it, was, if it was a transformer, it had to be somebody else's. And then we learned that there was no PCB involvement, which, of course, could be, make it even more of a disaster than it, it is right now. And then we heard just a few minutes ago the uh, shocking news, Channel 2 News was told by sources, that uh, this was all caused by an explosive device in an automobile parked in the parking garage on level B2. And one man, one of the workers in the World Trade Center and one of the maintenance men working down below in that area said that he saw a sheet of flame come from the area of the parking garage and then there was the explosion and he suffered a uh, blown eardrum. We have reports now of at least two people dead, 150 injured and that number is sure to go up. Uh, most of them are still in the hospital being treated and most of them for smoke inhalation. We also have reports of a number of people missing, uh, 50 um, kindergartners from PS95 in Gravesend, Brooklyn. However, they're thought to be okay. Part of them are thought to be in a cafeteria lunchroom, mm -hmm. and the other part thought to be in an elevator, and they're mm -hmm. said to be okay, and other kids that were there on a field trip on the observation tower are all all right. Then there are reports of people being trapped down below near the site of the explosion mm -hmm. in the rubble where several ceilings, floors collapsed. Uh, part of the ceiling over the path train platform collapsed. Or and maybe the debris, pe fell. debris fell on it. There are six levels underneath yes. the World right, Train right. Center. You've heard B2 it goes all the way and down the to And the smoke, of course, filled uh, the building and... Filled more than one of the buildings. Smoke yes. going up, a lot of the people on the very high floors having trouble breathing. Frank, jump in yes. here because... Well, the, the major portion of injuries appears to be smoke-related. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the problem has been that... Uh, this is the a smoke live picture. Poured right up. By the way. Yeah, we're looking at the live picture now of all the vehicles around the building. The smoke poured up through two ways. The elevator shaft that went right up to the top and also uh, through the stairwells. Mm -hmm. Those who were coming down the fortunate ones at the lower level said they went through thick, uh, soot, choking smoke to get out. We saw the faces all black as they left the building. Others who were trapped at higher levels remained and were reporting smoke uh, at their levels okay. too. But the uh, fire rescue squads arrived and they've been working their way up all afternoon from downstairs. And also, surprisingly, a helicopter came overhead, yes. dropped four of the fire uh, and police people down onto the roof via the rappelling, coming down on ropes. They brought scot packs, oxygen for those who needed it. And in the process, one pregnant lady, Debbie Matus, uh, was rescued. WCBS technician? One of our own people was up there. There, she said uh, she was frightened and upset when a helicopter took, didn't save them, right. but left, but she didn't realize they'd have to take down all the antennae and the... Uh, they cut everything the, off the roof. Flatten the roof. Back together. And, and that's obviously, we don't want people to think that when these kinds of fires or smoke situations occur, you run to the roof and helicopters will come because they can't. This is an exceptional case and one of the few I've ever heard of. That's they right. were also uh, going to leave some elevator people there as well. They you? dropped down some of the folks from the Otis elevator uh, people and uh, they're supposed to uh, repair it. Now, I'm not mm -hmm. sure whether the controls or the mechanisms on no. roof level Well, she also down pointed the out that the helicopter, as she thought, did not actually land. This live picture we're seeing a firefighter appears to be yeah. injured there. Smoke uh, inhalation. Well, his smoke inhalation yes. once again. I don't know whether the roof of the World Trade Center can really handle the weight of a helicopter. Well, I, I imagine it could, but uh, with the wind currents yes. and the uh, various uh, uh, antenna and, and signal systems sticking up there, there's no flat surface. Mm -hmm. I mean, you no. need a large flat surface. They managed to clear it for that. But here we see uh, the rescue. It's not as busy right now because I think no. most of the people who have come down have already been moved there's on. There's work going on down below, we though. Can't with, right. Yet. But you also, there's, there's someone getting treatment for smoke inhalation right now. They're getting oxygen, and uh, that's the prime method of treatment, as we heard well, from the Frank doctors. Interrupted. We, we have just received information that they are evacuating the Empire State Building as a precaution, just in case. 
There's, been, there's been, been a threat made. Listen. So, okay. The Empire State Building is being evacuated now as a precaution that supposedly a threat was made of another explosive device being in the Empire State Building. Uh, that's unconfirmed right. about a call telling about, a, about an explosive device. This is just in case mm -hmm. this has happened. And it's not yet been confirmed that this was an explosive device at the World Trade Center, but it is uh, starting to look like that. Uh, we have been hearing from a lot of people today telling stories of what it was like coming down, what the rescue effort was like, what it was like being trapped this afternoon. Here's one woman, and here's her story. Okay, come here. You want to sit down? No. You want to call your friend? We have a telephone. No, thank you. What happened? What happened? I don't know how long I told to get the... I was in the 30 seconds long. We got the car call. And something was, I don't know what's the matter. They buying some, some good clothes. And everybody's stuck in the stairs. I mean, everybody knew that bar. It's a lot of smog. We, you can breathe. You can breathe. You can breathe. No. Obviously up. Very, very upset. I remember seeing her in the first hour, so that was a couple of hours ago when that woman hope came she's down. Calmed down since yes, we do. We hope she's okay. You saw her face, the, the soot and smoke on her face, people inhaling this stuff, uh, and this can last, effects can last for some time. It's important if you were not treated and you do have some problems that you do go to a hospital or see your doctor. And about the evacuation of Empire State Building, Frank, you brought up a very interesting and, and valid point about people just now, crazy people just calling up just to get buildings evacuated. That, that frightens and worries yes, me absolutely. because you do have this kind of thing occur, maybe no truth at Copycat all that. stuff. But mm -hmm. what we saw in that woman, and you have to understand, yes. what she went through mm -hmm. was a shocking blackness like you could never believe. You, she could not see her hand probably in front of her face, was unable to breathe. This is the kind of terror that strikes when you're in that black, pitch black mm -hmm. smoke where you've lost where you think you're in space, you're lost, you have no idea, you're trying to feel your way down. The only way you can get out is to use your ears and your hands to feel your way down. And people who've never experienced that, and including also, myself, yeah. it's total fear. Isn't it right? that most people think they know their environment, but when something like that happens, they really don't you know. You can't find your way out of yeah. your own bedroom in that right. kind of a fire. And here's somebody trying to get down 100 stories or 50 stories in a stairwell that she's never been in mm -hmm. with people screaming around her and that leads to total you can see the hysteria on this woman's yes. face but they're all coming out of, so this is some time ago they're all coming out look at them they're all coming out of the smoke then their faces are black and it's as though they were underwater i mean right. you're trying to breathe water can you, you can't can it's you panic can you see through that stuff? you can't see you can't even see your hand in front of your face mm -hmm. and if you held it up six inches away you can't see your hand and that's well, you the did terror. that report well you look were, look at this lady here I mean, she's totally, she's out of it. She's in shock. Her face is black. She's been trying to breathe literally water. And add on to this, coming down, flight after flight after flight. Which after means your heart's pumping, you're breathing. You, you're, it's not a relaxed breathing. You're no. gasping for air, and the more you gasp, the deeper the smoke goes. Mm -hmm. It's totally paralyzing, and that's what these people Shallow are going through. breathing. Absolutely. And this is what the, you have to do. Moisturize, oxygen treatment, any kind of oxygen. And the doctor total we talked to before, Dr. Lamb, with whom we chatted a mom, moment ago. Now said, here, Jim, just, just yes. you see now, there's a window that's gone, and somebody, it looked like teletype paper, waving out. Yeah, this was a few they're, hours they're waving Now they're waving their coats out. Yeah, this, this is early today, ago, Frank. Yeah. right, to tell the fire people right. who are up there. Now, obviously, the fire people will go to those floors that are most affected, so a lot of people would needlessly panic because they didn't understand. But you could see the mm. terrible panic with this. Well, smoke. Dr. Lamb said a while ago that people who go home tonight and start coughing and start feeling some pain should get themselves to an emergency mm -hmm. room again. That they might need additional care. But I believe that most who are severely affected will be going are being treated because it's instant. You know you're in trouble. We should say now that because uh, of the report that a, an explosive device may have been the cause of the terror and the disaster at the World Trade Center today, the FBI is now involved in the investigation of this. You're looking at a live picture of what is going on down on the street. People continually, it's like hospital down there set up on the street. These are firemen right. being treated. Professionals who live with this every day and they're being treated. So you can imagine civilians who've never been through this, mm -hmm. what they must be going through and feeling. Here are These the guys went right to the limit. 
Oh, absolutely. And I'm sure many of them were in there with, with the Scott packs and oxygen. And when that ran out, they simply discarded it still kept on going. The fire is out. It has been out for quite some time here, but the smoke... The what smoke about, what about the people who were on the 107th floor? Okay. The Mayor. folks we try to help. Yes, John Donovan, uh, a spokesman for Mayor Dinkins on the phone. Mr. Donovan? Hello, Jim. Uh, was, you're calling from Japan, sir. No, Papa Bowie. Papa Bowie. Papa Bowie. I beg your pardon. Oh, it's a crank call. A crank call. Not, not a yeah. day for crank well, calls. Well, this is what I was afraid of before. This will turn some people on who shouldn't be turned on, and I regret uh, that. The activity continues on the streets around the World Trade Center. Well, uh, most of this, you know, a lot of the work has to be done, of course, the people that are trapped. Mm -hmm. We can't see what's going on there, mm -hmm. so it may seem calm on the surface, but it, that's really um, misleading, I should say. Now, looking at this, Jim, this is the west side. Normally, that would be back-to-back -back traffic yes. all the way up. You can see it's totally deserted. The only vehicles there are the the rescue people, uh, the ambulances, and, and Look no at that, Mawa. Mawa, New Jersey. Yes. Called uh, in from all over the yeah, area. Yeah, and it's, it's marvelous how rescue people respond and live with this. They're mm -hmm. coming in on their own time to help out and uh, get down to where the, the, the scene is. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the telephones now. We have uh, the Department of Transportation Commissioner, Lucius Riccio. Uh, hi, Mr. Riccio. Thank you for joining us. What hi. can you tell us about what your department is dealing with today? Well, we responded uh, immediately along with the uh, police and fire departments and EMS to, uh, to deal with this, uh, this crisis. Uh, we have over uh, 60 traffic agents in the area trying to cope with the transportation problems. First off, to make sure that the emergency vehicles can can do everything that, that uh, they have to do get the, to get the fire and police in there and get EMS able to pull people out. Uh, as a result, the, the entire area around the World Trade Center is a frozen zone, uh, and we are advising everyone to, to avoid lower Manhattan uh, with vehicles so that the emergency vehicles can, can get in and out quickly. The battery tunnel, the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, has been shut down all afternoon uh, to enable uh, emergency vehicles to... Uh, to get in and out of out of that area, and West Street is completely shut down. Uh, all of Lower Manhattan, south of Canal Street, is a um, is a frozen zone, and we're hoping that people will find alternate routes around this area uh, rather than to drive through there. Mr. Riccio, is it likely that that part of town will be a frozen zone over the entire weekend? Well, we certainly West Street is going to be uh, a problem as the investigation goes on. Uh, I would suspect that the police and fire, and now I heard the FBI is involved, uh, will will want to have that area secured so that they can do their full investigation. Uh, we hope to get get the battery tunnel back into service later today when the uh, fire department and EMS indicates to us that they have mm -hmm. treated all the people who are injured and, uh, and need uh, quick access out to a hospital or other, uh, other uh, treatment. Uh, so we hope to get that back later today and perhaps other uh, streets in lower Manhattan. But at this time, and as we approach the evening rush hour, we're advising people to, to avoid this area at all costs. We have uh, the Brooklyn Bridge is open, it, but it's extremely crowded because we have both uh, the people coming down the east side and coming down the west side having to go through there because the battery tunnel is shut down. If people can find alternate ways into to Brooklyn, that would be good. Uh, as far as the uh, Holland Tunnel, the Holland Tunnel has one lane inbound dedicated for uh, for emergency vehicles, so uh, people should try and avoid the Holland Tunnel if they can. Mr. Riccio, uh, you're the Department of Transportation Commissioner. Uh, does the parking garage in the World Trade Center come under your no, uh, banner? No, that's part that's of the uh, World Trade Center right, uh, facilities. So you're not involved in the investigation of the explosion that apparently occurred there? No, we are not, but uh, uh, my understanding, I have seen some reports that the, uh, the damage is, uh, is uh, shockingly extensive. Uh, like how extensive? Uh, could you describe well, what Well, I heard? had heard that there is a cavity 100 feet uh, deep in that area, and one police officer was, uh, was uh, in shock, uh, almost uh, in shock as a result of seeing the the, uh, the extent of the damage down there. I do know that the PATH train is shut down yes. uh, because uh, until the engineers can do a full assessment of the structural damage due to the uh, to the explosion. You say a hundred foot crater? Uh, I, I heard that was one report that I heard that it was uh, such a massive explosion that uh, 
that it might be as much as 100 feet. Uh, uh, it happened uh, probably on the B1 or the B2 level of the parking garage uh, and uh, was was not a small explosion. It was a massive explosion and, uh, and uh, I will see the extent well, of the damage over the next several hours. Any people that had been in that garage in that area at that time parking their car or getting their car out would not be around right now. Well, the, the deaths, the two deaths, and the uh, 15 uh, serious mm -hmm. uh, casualties, serious injuries uh, that uh, I've heard reported on, uh, it's most likely that they were in that area. In the garage uh, area. In the garage mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it was that uh, massive of an explosion uh, that uh, mm -hmm. people as much as a quarter of a mile away heard the explosion, uh, felt the explosion. It was, uh, yes. it was a major explosion. Mm -hmm. Mr. Riccio, thank, thank you very you. much. For more on the explosion angle... And its source, which yeah. we're trying to find out. Let's go to Channel 2's Chris Morgan. Mm -hmm. Chris? Chris? Yes, this is Morgan. Yes, Chris, go ahead. I'm sorry, Jim, I couldn't That's take you right. because of okay. the hubbub which is down here. Don't worry but about it. Late word has just come in from uh, two sources which we find to be fairly creditable in which they state that 15 minutes prior to this explosion down here, there was a phone call to police headquarters via 911. The phone caller, with a very heavy accent, told the operator that there was a bomb about to explode around the World Trade Center. At that point, the police mobilized quickly for a fast search. But during the course of that search, that bomb exploded in the basement of the World Trade Center, B-1, B-2, uh, wrecking havoc down there. Uh, damage now estimated to be uh, 100 feet by 100 or 1,000 square feet of damage downstairs. Now, the FBI, the police, New York City police that is, and the Port Authority police have gotten together for a joint investigation, taking a hard look at the damage and a look at the, uh, the possibility that that bomb exploded while being planted in a car. But even as we found that information out, late word came in that there was a second call now to police headquarters in which a caller said that a bomb was planted in the Empire State Building just moments ago. And the Empire State Building, it is our understanding, at the moment is in the process of being evacuated. So the investigation continues down here and now sudden move toward the Empire State Building in, uh, on 34th Street in Uptown Manhattan. Back to you, Jim. Chris, are they hazarding any... Um speculation as to what type of explosive had to have been used to get that kind of a result. No, but what they do note, it was obviously powerful and must have been contained in either a fairly large package, which is to say black powder or C2, Plastic. or it might very well have been a nitroglycerine, which was placed in, uh, in let's say, the uh, uh, gas tank of a car, which mm -hmm. when it exploded also allowed for the fire to spread. So they were out there, the bomb squad was out there making its search, and you said that we were told just 15 minutes after that, during the search, rather, correct me, during the search is when it went off? That is correct. Now, coming with you immediately is uh, Tony Guida. Tony has some late information. Tony? Well, it's not late on, on the particular issue of the bomb, Chris, but I did want to add, in case it hasn't been established at this point, the manager, the man who manages these uh, 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 World Trade Center buildings, all of them for the Port Authority, just told us uh, across the street, as far as structural damage, there is none. As far as transformers, there have been stories about transformers yeah. may have been on fire or blown up and then the spread of PCBs. That did not happen. Uh, there is a problem with asbestos. The city's DEP commissioner told us that earlier, but he doesn't think it got up into the building. He think it might have been confined in the garage and all electrical and heat and the ventilation mm -hmm. and that is out at the moment and they don't know when it will be back. Tony. Uh, nevertheless, they will be trying over the next few days to bring it back into, uh, into use. I think the important thing, though, at this moment is that, one, yes, a phone call had been received by the authorities to the effect that a bomb was about to explode in the vicinity of the building within 15 minutes. During the course of a search by police and other bomb personnel, that bomb, in fact, did explode. Now, the person who called, one, had a very heavy accent, two, identified himself as being a member of the former Yugoslavian Republic. It is a question now whether or not he then said that he was either Croatian or Bosnian. But the fact is that 15 minutes after that phone call alerting uh, the authorities to the fact that a bomb could explode, in fact, a bomb did explode. And now mm. police, FBI, and the Port Authority police combining their efforts in a search to find out, one, where that bomb was, how it was planted, what the contents were, and who was responsible for that explosion. Uh, Chris, Chris. Uh, we have two reports of two dead and many injured. 
seriously in that area. Were some of them members of the police bomb squad? Negative. No, they were not. They were persons who were in the area for other reasons, possibly going to get their car or workmen who were uh, on a cleanup detail in the area at the time. And the level B2 level, that's correct? I'm, I'm sorry, Dana, I could not read you correctly then. Please repeat. B2, the garage level B2, is that correct? Is that your That is right, garage levels B1 and B2, yes. Now, I know, Chris, you've been working on the explosive angle, but this is another question for another area. Do you know anything about the people who are still trapped below in the rubble? Uh, there is no one trapped below the level as of this moment. Everyone has been evacuated. Everyone's out. I'm sorry? Everybody's out? Everyone is out except for a few stragglers who are still walking down from the upper floors, which is, say, floors 95 and above. Many of them coming down, taking two to three hours to come down. In fact, there's a gentleman standing to my left who has just walked down Why from the him, 90th floor and has taken him well over two oh. hours to get down. Oh, my goodness. Chris, yeah. thank you very Incredible. much. Thank you, Chris. Oh, well... Uh, we have somebody on the telephone, Isaiah Sears, Isaiah Sears yeah. who we spoke with earlier today Isaiah during the phone? afternoon. Yes, sir. Isaiah, are you there? Yeah, hello. 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 Hi. Yeah, it's Isaiah. Yes, How are we you? hear you. How are you How doing, are you? Isaiah? Um, well, uh, we're doing pretty good up here. Yeah? Yeah. Isaiah, yeah. I want to ask you a question. Yes. There have been reports now that this possibly was not a transformer explosion, but possibly some type of bomb. When you hear that, when you talk to the other people who went through this ordeal today, what's your reaction? Well, uh, it's very confusing because I'm listening in the beginning, the whole building shook and it trembled. And uh, we have past experiences, we never heard anything like that, felt anything like this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we're listening to the radio now, police radio, uh, it's, 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 I mean, it's a completely different story from what uh, we experienced. And it's, it's completely different. Uh, the feeling, the, what happened up here. In what way is it different? Well, uh, in the past when we had uh, an emergency, it was a, a thing of a few seconds, you know, a minute or two, but, uh, but this was a, a, a instantaneously, we have smoke come all the way up here. And uh, for a moment we took it for granted because uh, we had all the past emergencies. But within about three minutes, we smelled a uh, uh, fire, a smoke. When I went out to open the door to check, it was dark already. I mean, instantaneously. This happens at 12:17 uh, and a few seconds. Isaiah, so let's let's get this clear so we understand where you are. You are still on I'm the still on the 110th floor. 110th floor. Any idea when you're coming down? Well, no. No. No one has come up to you and said. Hey. Uh, well, uh, they took the my two out and uh, I stayed behind because uh, I was up in the. Uh, uh, with the telephone lines because it got dark in here mm -hmm. and they needed some kind of communication so I was all opening the lines so they know where it is because it's dark did you use the flashlights did you see the helicopter come down on the roof yes helicopter came down what was that like describe what, what you saw you well uh, the helicopter came with a tremendous wheeling uh, wheel pull uh, force and uh, hardly had any room to land mm. it had to drop people down with uh, cables uh, and uh, was uh, ropes right. and all mechanical equipment that was dropped down and some of the police officer jumped uh, from the helicopter. Jumped? Yeah, they jumped. Um, the rope. No, the rope, rope or just oh, jumped the, the rope. Ropes, yeah. right. Okay, now what about when it came down and picked up a pregnant woman? Uh, she, well, in the beginning when she, uh, she, she was very uh, scared, nervous, and uh, she was confused and she didn't know if she should go or not and I, I keep telling her, you know, to go. Uh -huh. And she and did, and she's okay. We and, when, and the helicopter did actually land on the roof? Well, no, they stood, uh, stood up about maybe 50 feet on the air, 50 feet up the air. And then they lowered a basket? Yes. Did you help at all with this? No, I stood behind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many people are up there now, Mr. Rivera? Okay, right now we have, I'm um, here with me uh, in the uh, in the 110th floor. I have two police, uh, three police officers, one sergeant. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there's other people, and the helicopter keeps uh, landing. It does. It has to What is it doing? Bringing in more, uh, more yeah, oxygen? Yeah, they have uh, more people coming down for the elevator. They have a search team looking down every floor. They mm -hmm. come and reporting okay. up whenever they need any mm -hmm. uh, medical uh, Isaiah, how do you feel hearing the possibility that it was an explosive device that caused all this, that it blew a crater 100 feet deep? and across in the parking garage. How does that make you feel right now? Uh, well, I just listening to you, it gives me the chill because I didn't know that it happened. Uh, I thought it was just some kind of a, a train uh, uh, explosion downstairs by the mm -hmm. railroad tracks. 
And uh, they keep saying there was some fun, some uh, condensers or mm. electrical power explosion. But uh, right now, uh, the feeling is, is kind of uh, very scary, nervous. Uh, I can't just think straight. To tell you the truth, it's, it's very scary. Uh, yes. You know, it's, it's beyond uh, trying to understand this. Right. Mr. Rivera, but you did say that the police now are going down through the building. Yes, yeah, they've been bringing, uh, by dropping by the helicopter, more people, more officers, more emergency uh, officers right. to uh, do re uh, search, and they're uh, going around the floors and okay. bringing out people. Uh, okay, I, so obviously all those children that we've heard reports up there are fine because the police are on their way, and we want the parents to know that everything's coming out okay. Yes, yes. So okay. Far, yes. You know, beyond the terror of this event in and of itself, mm -hmm. which is plenty. Yeah. The news that it's the, oh, the news I, that it's did you want to say something, Mr. Rivera? Yes, I have a police officer here that has more confirmed information that you probably can. Uh, can we yes. talk to him? Uh -huh. Yes, his name is Joseph Zap Zap uh, we'll Zap B. We'll call I, him Joe. Joe. Okay, we're going to Joe. Okay, Joe. Officer Joe. Joe, we'll talk to you right okay. now. Officer Joe. Officer Joe, what's, yes. happening yeah, what's happening up there now? Hello, it's police officer Zagby. Yeah, what is happening now? You have search teams on a roof now coming in, uh, from what we understand, via helicopter rappelling down or landing. Yeah, there was that search team going to building number two. I just heard it over our radio. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, what are they doing? What they're going to do is they're going to rappel down to the rooftop and clear an area for the helicopter to land to land a, um, a team of uh, elevator mechanics so they can get the elevators in that building working also. Okay. So they can take the people out of there instead of everybody having to walk on it. Do you, do you know anything about the school children that are supposedly in a cafeteria and, and one group also? in an elevator. You know anything about that? I, I heard something briefly on the radio earlier that everybody was okay. Oh, I got a few calls up here from, uh, there, actually there are a few of those kids are cops, daughters, and sons, so oh, I got a few goodness. calls here asking if everything was all right. As far as I know, everything is fine. Oh, that's Joe, great. Joe, if you have to, would you be able to remove people with a basket again? Is that uh, part of we the have, kind of course, we have, that, we have that capability if mm -hmm. we had to do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's Were you with the uh, crew that rescued the pregnant woman? Uh, well, we were, the, um, I was amongst the first crew to uh, rappel down into the rooftop, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, the pregnant woman was way out lifted as soon as I came inside to set up the temporary headquarters. Joe, what about smoke? Is smoke still a problem? It's, it's still here. It's not, it's not really, really thick, but you can smell it in the air. It's, mm -hmm. it's beginning to clear out a little bit. Mm -hmm. up, uh, up this high, we're still on 110th floor. Mm -hmm. We have teams that are, uh, heading, we have three search teams and two elevator teams that are uh, heading down each stairwell, the three stairwells in this bin building, and they're down to the 88th floor at this time, and they haven't found any. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. Have you come down a rope from a helicopter before? Well, we practice this all the time. I see. So this is the real uh, thing, Joe. How was uh, the real this thing? Is number one for the real thing. Is that right? Yes, it is. And you, yes. picked a, uh, you picked a heck of a building, the top of the World Trade Center. <laughs> It was interesting. Yeah, but you also had to take down all the gear up there in order to land a helicopter. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Joe, congratulations to you and your fellow officers. You did a hell of a job, really. Yeah, thank you, sir. Just doing our job. Mark, and take good, and take good care of yourselves. And everybody up there. Let's yes, move to Channel 2's Brian Williams down on the scene live. Brian? Well, I can tell you that lower Manhattan is still buttoned up tight. Uh, traffic not moving except for emergency vehicles. People still being treated by EMS. Behind me, ambulances are still preparing stretchers, still have blankets out, uh, not at all over. No one is saying this is uh, 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 freeing up down here in this region at all. Now, of course, begins a different phase of the investigation. Based on the assumption that this was an explosive device, uh, retracking what this might have been, exactly what we heard Channel 2's Chris Morgan talk about the location, the size of the explosion, what investigators start to look into. Again, to backtrack, this explains uh, something we observed earlier this afternoon. People from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. These are uh, longtime explosive experts. They work uh, for the U.S. Treasu uh, Treasury. Uh, back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, when there was a series of abortion clinic bombings in this country, ATF, as it's known, was the government agency responsible uh, for investigating those explosions. They have crack investigators working for them. This explains why some of those investigators were seen on the scene here this afternoon. Again, the enormity of the blast is still really becoming apparent to everyone here. It was so many hours this afternoon before we knew 
who was hurt and where, how many fires were burning. Complete bedlam in lower Manhattan. Again, that is not to say the situation down here is under control. Yes, pedestrian traffic has returned to the sidewalks where there were clumps of hundreds, even thousands of people, uh, some of them dazed, having just exited their office buildings, knowing not really why, their faces soot-covered, uh, having with them all that they were able to carry out and asking us what was going on. Uh, and as you know, for minutes, uh, if not hours, we were unable to give them a specific answer. Just that something terrible had happened, a lot of smoke, noxious fumes, and a lot of people getting treatment down here in Lower Manhattan. Back to you. Brian, and then the fires, too. Uh, there was a four-alarm fire in one of the buildings. But you said earlier, you look up there, you couldn't uh, see it from the outside. Absolutely. Uh, that was the extraordinary thing. You had thousands of people looking up at these twin towers. Of course, you can't miss them from any angle in the, the five boroughs if you're in a good enough vantage point. And there was nothing uh, uh, visible. Part of that is uh, the ceiling was so low. Mm -hmm. This was an almost horizontal snowstorm, you'll recall, when this uh, happened uh, shortly before 12.30 this afternoon. And the ceiling, the clouds were very low, almost at about 1,000 feet or less. And uh, some of the World Trade Center was not visible from people at least uh, coming up the West Side Highway as we did when all of our Channel 2 News crews and reporters were first responding to this story. Brian, thank you. And to uh, recap, sort of, I'm just getting a message now I in my ear. So. All right, now to Michelle Marsh in the newsroom. Okay, Jim and Dana, here's the very latest information we have at this hour. The New York City Police Department confirms that the Empire State Building is now being evacuated because of a bomb threat. And sources have told Channel 2 News that the deadly blast at the World Trade Center might have been caused by an explosive device. Police will not confirm that, but the FBI is now on the scene. We have also just learned that the death toll has risen in the explosion at least Three men are reported dead. An unknown number of people remain trapped. Also, we told you earlier about a group of Brooklyn kindergartners from PS95 in Gravesend who had gone on a field trip to the World Trade Center. About 50 kids are still in the building. One teacher who's with the students says that her class of about 20 to 25 kids is on the observation deck on the 107th floor. Uh, this teacher believes the other class may be, and we stress may be, uh, still stuck in the elevator. Now, we have not heard of any health problems at all with the children. As far as we know, everyone is okay. And uh, Jim and Dana, of course, you also heard reports uh, from the field uh, mm -hmm. from officials there that uh, they also heard that the children are just fine. And of course, the effort is underway to restore power to the World Trade Center, get those elevators moving just as soon as possible. Okay. Fire officials also now report more than 200 people are hurt from this disaster. Let's go now to the matter of traffic. As Brian Williams told you, traffic is a complete mess. Uh, here's the latest that we know. All traffic is being diverted away from the Holland Tunnel to leave the area open for emergency service workers. The Brooklyn Battery Tunnel remains closed. It's unlikely that it will reopen anytime soon. Again, it's being used for emergency vehicles. The Gowanus Expressway leading into the Prospect Expressway is closed to everyone but emergency vehicles. FDR Drive closed at South Ferry and it's just jam-packed and hardly moving from Canal Street South. The West Side Highway is closed in both directions south of Canal. Eastbound on Canal Street is, is uh, packed solid from the Holland Tunnel to the Manhattan Bridge. Chambers Street, Broadway, West Broadway, also overloaded. Extreme gridlock south of Canal from east to west. West Street is closed from Canal Street all the way down to Battery Park. There is no path service between the World Trade Center and New Jersey. All other path trains are running with major delays. In the subway, the numbers 1 and 9 train are bypassing Cortland Street Station. All other service is normal. We are told that four ferries are now running between the World Financial Center to Hoboken. And as for city buses, all service has been suspended south of Park Row. There is no Staten Island Express bus service at all. You need to go to Staten Island, take the ferry where you can pick up buses. Trains out of Penn Station are running on schedule, and officials say they'll add more trains as volume dictates. Buses out of the Port Authority to New Jersey are running normally. Again, we're told buses will be added as volume dictates. If you normally take a bus from the World Trade Center to New Jersey, you're being advised to go to the Port Authority. And finally, the ferry between Battery Park and Hoboken will run every 20 minutes. Uh, no, I've got an update on that. It's running now every six minutes from now until 
6 o'clock. And that is the very latest we have from the newsroom. Michelle, yep. Michelle, clarify one thing for us, please. Uh, you said we have three dead. Now, is that three in addition to the two, or no. three including the two we've been reporting? The information we have is a total of three okay. dead, and we are told all men, and that's the latest we have. Okay. And okay. they came from the area of the explosion, is that correct, as far as you know? We're still getting more information on that, and I'll try to confirm more later. And for I you. think I also heard you say that uh, a number of people were still trapped in the rubble. That's the information that we have. And do you know the progress of the search at all? Have you had any reports on that? We're, no progress reports right now. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks. Thank you. I think it's important to say again what Chris Borgen told us several yes. moments ago, mm -hmm. uh, that there was a phone call to 911 earlier today saying no that in 15 minutes there was going to be a bomb that would go off around the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. person with a heavy accent, apparently from the former Yugoslav Republic. During the search, the uh, bomb squad people went out. During the search, the bomb went off. And fortunately, none of the bomb squad people were hurt. No. But people who happened to be in the garage parking the car, picking up the car, did get hurt. Some of them lost their lives. Chris and the DOT commissioner, Lucia Riccio, said mm -hmm. that there's this huge crater like uh, 1,000 square feet, the level B1, yes. B2, uh, the parking garage. And that's where the people are trapped in the rubble down and beneath, beneath it. And I suppose that's part of that's the ceiling for the path sub, uh, train platform mm. that collapsed on people there. Also, as a precaution, the Empire State Building has been evacuated. There was no phone call, was there? It was just like um, a precaution, is that correct? No, no, there was a, there phone, was a phone call. call. There was, there there was a, supposedly there was a there phone was call. There was a call. Call 911. Apparently That's a just call a later call. today, yes. and the Empire Jim, State Building is being evacuated. We have another report now from Mary Murphy at uh, Beekman Downtown Hospital, I believe. Mary? Mary? Hello, Jim. Hello, Dana. Uh, pardon me if I can't hear you that well because the sound is a little intermittent. Uh, some of the cables are a little wet down here from the snow. I can tell you that 104 patients did come to this hospital after the disaster at the World Trade Center. Some of them are slowly but surely being released. We met up with a couple of Port Authority cops who had bandages on their heads, and they said that tiles had hit them when they were in the sub-basement level in their offices. Another man had a blanket around him. He was a financial analyst who worked on the 50th floor of the Trade Center. He seemed to be in a daze. He said that he suffered slight smoke inhalation, and it was very, very hard to get down the steps, down the 50 flights, out to, into the air. He said that it was very dark, and he just really seemed stunned by everything that had happened. Amazingly, considering that we think a bomb caused this explosion, it's amazing that there were not more injuries here. This is the closest hospital to the World Trade Center. There were a lot of bruises, a lot of abrasions, maybe some broken bones among some of the victims. But by and large, nothing very, very serious. We did find out that a firefighter from Rescue One had fallen down three flights, I think through some floors, and broken his kneecap, and he may have to go into surgery. Right now, I'm still having a problem with my earpiece, so I don't think I'll be able to answer okay. any of your okay. questions. Mary. I can only update you a bit and let you know that from the beginning, there was a man taken in about 12.33 this afternoon here to Beekman downtown, and he had blood all over his body. And he was one of the first patients, and he told his paramedic that a car seemed to explode in the parking garage of the World Trade Center in Tower A, and that the force of it threw him out, actually, forced him out of the building. There must have been some gaping hole there. This man is apparently doing okay. We don't know if he required surgery. We knew that he had some kind of a laceration on his back. And then other people told us that it did seem to be like an explosion. There was a flash of blue light in that sub-basement level. So as you've been reporting from back there and from the World Trade Center, apparently the bomb squad and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms both checking out the possibility that this was a bomb that was planted. Uh, we also had reported about this other woman up on the 31st floor who said that she heard what appeared to be a bomb or seemed to be a bomb. Yeah. And right now, she Mary, we're looking at prove some... it, of course, but it, it was a very big force felt up on the 34th floor. Mary, Mary we're looking at a picture. That, I have some we're problems looking... with the audio. Yeah. Okay. I, I, now I hear you, Jim. We're looking now at a picture of the crater in the parking garage as you were talking. We were trying to get your attention to the fact that we were seeing the direct point of the explosion. These are the first pictures from yes. inside I the garage. See. And we're also told now that there are four people confirmed We've dead. We call this the terror of the tower. 
and it's made even more so by the fact that it was an explosive device. Mm -hmm. And from now on, people in New York are going to feel even more vulnerable than they've ever felt before. And that's really terror. That's Look at terrible. that car, Jim. Yes. The damage to that car. Four people confirmed uh, dead, more than 100 injured, and some people still unaccounted for at this hour. This wraps up our special yes. coverage. With, we'll keep going here, and as we look at these pictures. Look at the, the pipes. Uh, one of the firefighters Just talked about steam pipes, water pipes, power lines. Devastated inside. That, had been a, that car had to have been loaded with explosives, some type or other, nitroglycerin, as Chris said, or plastic. This wraps up our special Channel 2 coverage of the explosion and aftermath at the World Trade Center. There are still many unanswered questions. For more on what's going on in Lower Manhattan, Channel 2 News at 5. This is Channel 2 News at 5. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ernie Anastas. And I'm Carol Martin. We continue now our coverage of the terror that has struck the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. Police say that it may, in fact, have been a bomb, a massive bomb, that caused an explosion to rip through the past train station below the Trade Centers just after noon today, sending shockwaves through the buildings where as many as 100,000 people were at work. The explosion has killed four. That is the number at this hour. And it has injured more than 200. All day long, a steady stream of survivors emerged from two of the world's tallest buildings. But many, of course, are still trapped inside, and rescue crews say it may be hours before they are all evacuated. Of course, the, uh, the people who are inside the building have been told uh, not to panic. They're trying to get as much information to them. Right now, we're going to get the very latest for you. Team coverage of our story continues with Channel 2's Brian Williams, who joins us live right now from Church Street in Lower Manhattan. Brian, what's the latest? What an extraordinary afternoon here in Lower Manhattan. All day long, Ernie, it's been a search for information. Dazed victims of the smoke, the fire, people in their offices one moment, the next moment crowding into stairwells, some of them going over 100 stories down to breathe the fresh air or relatively fresh air at street level. All day long, all city officials wondering what caused this. Could it be among the miles of the cables that run under Lower Manhattan that power structures like the World Trade Center? Was it transformers? Well, now comes word, at least unofficially, sources reporting that it was, in fact, a bomb uh, that blew up uh, in the parking level underneath the World Trade Center, causing all this, causing a virtual standstill and terror in Lower Manhattan. We're now going with the figure from a high-ranking NYFD, a fire department source, of four dead in this terrible explosion. It happened shortly before 12.30, the blast that rocked much of Lower Manhattan, sparking at least two fires in the World Trade Towers. For hours, it was hard to know exactly what had happened, where the injured were, even what was burning. This firefighter was among the first on the scene. The floor seemed to have exploded down and collapsed into the level below that. And when we got down there, we got down about, I would say, three, 400 feet in. Well, we were met by a man coming out, uh, severely injured. I don't know how he lived. I don't know how he lived. Where was he coming from? I don't know. <laughs> Anybody else down there? Uh, I don't know. They just we pulled another guy out later on. Seven engine pulled a man out later on, and they're still searching. And that was pretty smoky and and. Uh, it was really nasty. A lot of cars on fire. A lot of steam pipes exploded and broke. A lot of walls collapsed down. It was a mess. In all, over 400 firefighters responded, along with hundreds of police. And slowly, the day soot-covered employees in this vast complex started to emerge, each one with a different story to tell about how they got out. It was like a boom, and then the lights went out for a second, and they came back on, and then they just told us to get out. The smoke started going up. How many floors did you just come down? 105. What's it like? How long did your trip take? Uh, it took about, what, an hour? Yeah, ten, an hour, hour ten, ten minutes. It was moving at first. Uh, stairwell filled up with smoke, no announcements. It flattened out to a hallway on 70 when probably was the scariest. We weren't moving. We were getting smokier. Uh, a lot of carbon in the smoke, and uh, I don't know, it didn't look good. So many stories among the people who had to make their way from high above the World Trade Center all the way down to the ground floors. Again, most of the afternoon was spent uh, with news media and official New York trying to find out just what happened, where the fires were, where the injured people were. We are told now that this blast, uh, and we're calling it an explosive device of some sort, among the damage underneath the World Trade Center in the parking area, 
the limousine that usually carries the president when he is in New York. As you know, when the president travels, a lot of the equipment is flown in in advance, but since he travels to New York frequently, a lot of the gear, the uh, armored or protective limousines are kept here. They, uh, in fact, have been damaged in this explosion today. Again, it is hard to describe the feeling in Lower Manhattan. Uh, all traffic uh, having been stopped hours ago, official vehicles clogging the streets, ambulances making routine uh, pickups and uh, departures with, uh, with injured people, a lot of people being treated on the scene for smoke inhalation, uh, an absolutely wild scene here in Lower Manhattan. Ernie Carroll? Brian, uh, we want to talk about uh, certainly the people who are trapped inside those towers right now. It's going to be a long and tedious night. They've got to go through these various floors and check each office, each door. Uh, can you tell us what you know about that and what they anticipate, uh, how long that'll take? Well, remember, uh, with power out, it is a very painstaking process. They have to go through with searchlights. Most people who work in offices, live in big apartment buildings, have seen those emergency lights at the end of every hallway. They're battery powered. They're checked uh, periodically. They're supposed to work in instances like this. You can't depend on them all working, however. And yes, what a tedious process, because in any given office building, let alone one that houses the thousands that the World Trade Center does, you have people of varying medical conditions. We've already heard a brave rescue story of a pregnant woman today. I've had first-hand accounts here of people passing asthma victims in the crowded stairwells going down. Everyone emerging from these buildings with soot on their faces. I happen to be in a hotel across the street where people, after this long ordeal, for the first time looked at themselves in the mirror and realized what they had just been through, their faces covered with this soot. Um, extraordinary stories to be told here in Lower Manhattan. Right now, we want to go for more of that to Channel 2's Lisa Castleman, who has spent... Oh, we're going to go back to the studio. Uh, pardon me, my error. Back to Ernie and Carol once again. All right, Brian. Right. Right. Yeah, well, we're talking 1,700 feet in the air, those towers. They're, I think, second and third tallest buildings in the world after the Sears Tower in Chicago. One big question, though, about the investigation at this point, about what may have been an explosive device that the FBI is involved, we're told. What are you hearing from down there? Brian? Okay, I think he's going to so we'll okay. get back to that in just a bit. Uh, we also, uh, we're talking about explosions, and we're talking about what's going on. We did have a report uh, that there has been an evacuation, uh, at least underway at the Empire State Building. We're trying to get further information on that story for you to give you some details. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have reporters standing by. The, the, the important thing to, to recommend here is that those people who are at home and who are watching and who are in that building, to worry, not to panic. We have been told repeatedly by the fire officials that there is no fire That's right, right fire now, has been okay? put out, definitely. And the people Most are, the, the rescue workers are in there, they are trying to get to these people, they will get to them, and they just don't matter. Phone numbers as well that we will be giving you, that if you happen to still be inside the trade center and watching us on some battery-powered machine or the like on a television, you could call out and make sure they know where you are, but we'll give you that very shortly. Right. Mary Murphy standing by now, I believe, at New York Beekman Downtown Hospital, where so many of the injured were taken. Mary, what's the latest there? She's All not right. there with us yet. But, oh, there, there she is. There she is. Okay, Mary. Hospital Mary turned into a medical madhouse about 12.30 this afternoon. This is the closest hospital to the World Trade Center, and the first survivors were brought here covered with blood or soot many of them suffering from smoke inhalation or broken bones. The ambulances came from all directions, depositing victims at the emergency room door on stretchers, many people gasping for air. Those who could speak talked of being trapped underground in the sub-basement levels of the World Trade Center. We crawled out from under rocks, so I don't know. I can only talk for the basement two level. Total darkness, walls, concrete walls have collapsed. People are crawling out from underneath that. It's terrible down there. How many people do you think are trapped there? Uh, in my shop, there's about 40 guys trapped on the walls, at least. Just in my shop alone. I was making 20 stomachs for some people, and all of a sudden I hear X blow, and that was it, so everybody started to run. And look at me, I, I have asthma. I don't even have my coat. The smoke it was uh, incredible, and uh, I didn't know where to go. I couldn't see anything. One of the first patients who was brought to Beekman, one who was covered with blood, told his doctor that he believed there was a car explosion in the basement. I believe he was inside the garage. He was, was, something exploded. It looked like a vehicle exploded. And he was blown backwards. 
Uh, he, that's, all, that's the only thing he remembers, that there was an explosion. A lot of people in there, and uh, I got—I must compliment Beekman Hospital. They—they they had it on the ball. They uh, knew exactly uh, what they were doing. Their trauma unit was—I give them 100 percent. Excellent job. Well, tell me what happened with the firemen. Uh, Kevin Shea was one of uh, the firemen from Rescue One. Had fallen about two flights through some of the collapsed floors and uh, broke his kneecap. So what kind of shape is he in now? Fine, he's fine. He's going to stay. He's going to. Now at last count, 104 people were being treated here, and the cafeteria in the hospital was transformed into another emergency room. Two pregnant women were among the injured, as we mentioned earlier today, and families of the World Trade Center workers are now gathering in the hospital lobby to get whatever updated information they can. We also mentioned earlier that about a third of the hospital staff, 800 on the staff, about a third of those workers are directly involved in this emergency, and others are being brought in, I believe, on emergency status so they can help out. I am having a problem with my hearing because apparently transmitter problems are going on due to the problem at the World Trade Center. So I don't think I'll be able to answer any questions, but we'll have an update later on. Reporting live from downtown Beekman Hospital, I'm Mary Murphy. Back to you. Okay, Mary, we'll get back to you a little bit later on. We do want to hear more about uh, those stories about people getting out of those buildings, and they are incredible stories. Lisa Castleman is standing by with more on that for us. Lisa? Here's what's happening here right now. For a few minutes ago, it was actually quiet, but other people are now emerging from the Twin Towers, getting treated receiving oxygen right here now uh, four hours after it, more than four hours after the explosion happened. Uh, they actually took about three or four people away in ambulances to hospitals just about one minute ago and you may be able to hear there's an ambulance backing up to take people away uh, right beside me right now. It is really not a settled scene here. Many people coming out now still say they have trouble breathing. Uh, many of them had to walk down the stairwell, the dark stairwell, uh, they really couldn't breathe at all. I think we may have some tape of these people as they describe their ordeal to us uh, earlier today. I was in the 90 seconds. No, we got the gun call. Um, the people who did get out of the World Trade Center came out stunned, unsure if they were really okay. And everybody stuck in the stairs. I mean, everybody knew that it's a lot of smog. We, you can breathe. You can breathe. All 110 floors of the Twin Towers were evacuated. People emerged by the hundreds with soot all over their faces, still gasping for air. The whole building shook, and then the lights went out. So we had to walk down from the 31st floor. Many people walked as many as 110 flights through smoky, dark stairwells to get out. The smoke was very black and, and very thick. And thank goodness we had uh, water in the office, so we wet handkerchiefs and it helped. Go, but going down the stairs, you know, there was smoke. You went down the stairwell? Yes. But it's fine. It's getting better now. But we had to wait over an hour in the office before we could go down. What was that like having to wait, not fully understanding what it happened? It was scary. It was scary, yes. One woman, a CBS employee, was working at the network's transmitter site at the top of the tower when the explosion happened. Debbie Matu described how she was rescued by helicopter from the top of the building. And then when they came back and actually landed, um, I felt much better and so did everybody else, knowing that they could land up there and, and take us away. I felt a lot of relief. As you can see behind me, there are still many people still coming out of the Twin Towers now. Right over here, about two of them are being taken away to a hospital. Back over there, behind the men in the green, there are two or three people wrapped in blankets still receiving oxygen. You can m imagine what it was like for them to wait this long to get out. It was dark, it was hard to breathe, and as they described in the tape, it was, it was really a horror. For a while, about an hour ago, it was quite a bit quieter out here. People even thought they had most of them out. But as you can see, actually way down there, here's another person being taken out on a stretcher. Imagine waiting this long to get to safety, still unsure if they're actually going to be all right. So clearly this uh, evacuation is uh, nowhere near over and uh, it's quite a scene. For more on this story, let's go to my colleague, John Slattery. Right now I hear nothing. Ron, we're not hearing anything. No. All right, I'm here at uh, St. Vincent's Hospital uh, where, as you can see behind me, as evidenced by this police car and these uh, two ambulances which are in the wrong direction, this is the way it's been all afternoon. But a number of policemen have been out here stopping traffic. 
allowing uh, ambulances to come in, in here any way they want. We had a briefing a little while ago inside the hospital by the medical director and by the president of St. Vincent's Hospital who gave us the latest information on the number of patients who have been brought here. Let's take a look at some of those patients who came in here a little bit earlier today. Uh, there have been now a total of 106 patients brought in, including some Port Authority personnel, including at least two police officers, and um, the officials here say three firemen were brought in, but uh, I saw three more brought in, so that's a total of six firemen brought to St. Vincent's, a total of 106 patients. One patient who was brought here expired uh, this afternoon about 2.30. Dr. Lambert King said that patient who died suffered from a crushed chest. He said something must have fallen onto the man's chest. He suffered cardiac arrest. He came into the hospital with cardiac arrest and died a short time later. He said there are two other very serious patients who were brought here, one suffering a, uh, a serious uh, severed artery and the other suffering multiple fractures. Other than that, approximately 100 patients brought here suffered smoke inhalation, and of those, only two have needed to be tested to see if there was any burning of their upper respiratory system or to be scoped to see what the condition of their lungs were. Again, only two required those procedures. The rest, we're told, seem to be minor smoke inhalation cases, and we're told that approximately half of those will be released tonight. So the latest here at Beekman, 106 people brought here, one of those people dying, four others in serious condition. That's the latest from St. Vincent's Hospital. This is John Slattery reporting live. And John, as far as a uh, staff situation is concerned, they're now in stage three, is that correct? That's I'll right, they, uh, they established a, uh, the absolute top priority stage of emergency here at this hospital. Another ambulance coming in here now. They, are, they were coming in many, uh, many more than they are now, but now it's in dribs and drabs. Uh, you've got people who, uh, as we saw before, coming down uh, more than 100 flights, taking an hour and a half uh, for many of them. When they got down, they were suffering either from exhaustion or smoke inhalation. Some of them uh, took longer than others to get down, and because of that, only now are some of these patients uh, still arriving here. Because of all of this, the hospital went into a high level of emergency, the highest level it ever has, and uh, they say even with this, the hospital is able to accommodate all of the people brought in for this trauma treatment and as well all the other emergency patients who might come in here. They've had no, no need to divert anybody. It is the most terrifying situation, John. I wanted to ask you, too, about the fatality there at St. Vincent. You said a crushed chest, cardiac arrest. There were early reports that some of the two or three early victims were probably in this area of the parking lot where debris fell upon them. Was there any indication that there was yeah, a connection? Hmm. John, can you hear us? I guess we lost you. Okay. Uh, we just lost the yes, job. I'm here. Yes, Go I beg your John. pardon. Uh, did they did not exactly say what it was, what the cause was. They have not been able to, uh, to identify uh, the, uh, the next of kin, to notify the next of kin of what happened. And uh, because of that, they're keeping very limited information for us, yeah. actually at this point telling us that he's only a man. They will not tell us the circumstances under which he died. All right, John Slattery, thank you for your report. We'll get back to you right now. We're going to jump into the news where Michelle Marsh is there with some more information about the traffic situation. Michelle? All right, Ernie and Carolyn, as you can imagine, uh, traffic is tangled up in terrible knots in lower Manhattan at this hour. Here's the very latest that we have. All traffic is being diverted away from the Holland Tunnel to uh, leave the area open for emergency service workers. The Brooklyn Battery Tunnel remains closed. It's being used for emergency vehicles. The Gowanus Expressway leading into the Prospect Expressway is closed to everyone but emergency vehicles. The FDR Drive is closed at South Ferry from Canal Street South. It's a virtual parking lot right now. The West Side Highway is closed in both directions south of Canal. Eastbound on Canal Street traffic is barely moving from the Holland Tunnel to the Manhattan Bridge. Chambers Street, Broadway, and West Broadway also tangled in knots. There is extreme gridlock south of Canal from east to west. And West Street is closed from Canal Street all the way down to Battery Park. As for trains, there is no path service between the World Trade Center and New Jersey. All other path trains are running with major delays at this hour. In the subway, the numbers 1 and 9 train are bypassing Cortland Street Station. All other service is normal right now. We are told that four ferries are now running between the World Financial Center to Hoboken. All 
city bus service has been suspended south of Park Row. There is no Staten Island Express bus service at all. If you need to go to Staten Island, take the ferry where you can pick up buses. Trains out of Penn Station are running on schedule, and officials say they'll add more trains as volume dictates. Buses out of the Port Authority to New Jersey are running normally. Again, we are told more buses will be added as volume dictates. If you're normally uh, taking a bus from the World Trade Center to New Jersey, you're being advised to go to the Port Authority. The ferry between Battery Park and Hoboken will run every 20 minutes. And uh, no, here's the latest on that. The ferry between Battery Park and Hoboken uh, will run every six minutes until six o'clock. All right, let's take a look now at some phone numbers. If you are trapped in one of those towers, the fire department says you can call some numbers to tell rescuers where you are. Here are these very important numbers, 212-999-2222-4. Two one two nine 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 three 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 three. Please do not call nine one one. And if you're listening to us in the towers, uh, the fire department is urging you to stay put. Uh, they will reach you. Uh, try to remain calm. The evacuation continues. And that's the latest information we have right now from the newsroom. Ernie okay, Carroll. Michelle. Thank you. They they do have their work cut out for them because, as we say, we're getting into nighttime. Uh, there's still no electricity, as we understand, turned on, and uh, it's going to be dark in there, and they'll be. Really certainly wanting to move around, but the word is to stay put because help is on the way. It's going to be a little difficult because of the elevator system as well, because as you know, to get up to those higher floors, you have to change elevators. Yes. So I'm sure they're doing one Herculean job trying to get to these people. It's going to be a difficult job, but I'm sure it'll get done. We're going to check the latest now with Ren Scott, who is on the scene to give us an update as to where we're at right now. Ren? Well, Ernie, we just came back from the levels below this building, below the World Trade Center, where it appears there was some type of explosion, and from what we saw down there, there was a very major explosion of some kind. Below this building, there are three levels of parking going down to a fourth level, which is where the PATH train service is. As we walked in underground on the first level of parking, there is a crater somewhere between 40 and 60 feet wide. It is blown wide open through concrete that is easily one foot thick, and that crater goes down three levels. We could not look over the crater, but firefighters there told us that it goes all the way down, that you can see the PATH train tracks from that top floor. As you look around, you see charred vehicles. There are dozens of uh, automobiles down there. A lot of them burn beyond recognition. Firefighters are down there looking through the rubble, looking through the automobiles, looking through all the wreckage, trying to make sure that there are no more bodies down there. Now, you heard from John Flattery, the level now, or the number of confirmed dead is four. Uh, right before we went down there, they had pulled two other bodies down there. That is what brought the uh, brought the level to four. Uh, they are sifting through the rubble. They say that with the number of cars that are down there and with the number of traffic that uh, takes place below this structure during the day, they are afraid that there may be a number uh, of other people trapped down there. Uh, it, it is devastation like I have never seen. Uh, we followed the bomb squad down there, uh, and they are down there trying to inspect the damage, trying to detect what caused this explosion. Uh, people who are down there who are very experienced in this field tell me it is something like they have never seen firefighters are walking around with complete shock on their faces. It is a huge crater. It goes down four levels. Something very powerful exploded down there and opened up this crater. Uh, there are no flames down there. There is no more smoke. It is nothing but wreckage. And right now they are digging through that wreckage, trying to find anybody. And I can tell you, if there are people trapped down there, uh, it is very unlikely that anybody survived that blast. It is, uh, it is something like you've never seen. Back to the studio. Well, I think the pictures say it all. We can yes. barely uh, take it in ourselves. Is there any damage structurally to the path area, the train? Uh, we did not get to see down there. We know that the path service is not running from here. We do. I would imagine there has to be some damage. It was such a massive explosion. One of the reasons they ran us out the, from down there and one of the concerns they have, they Just say that this may have done major damage to the structure, the foundation of this building. When they built the World Trade Center, Center they had to go down some 70 feet uh, to support a structure that goes up 110 stories. Uh, this explosion goes all the way down to the base of this foundation. They are concerned about the structure right now and that there will be further cave-in. So uh, I would imagine the damage has to go all the way down to the fourth level. Uh, and as you saw in those pictures, it, it is something like I have never seen. There are, uh, the whole superstructure is just uh, completely demolished, and they are down there right now sifting through it. All right, Ren, we'll get back to you as well. We also want to report, we just have the information, the death toll has now risen to five, five confirmed dead 
in this tragedy this afternoon. Let's get more on the situation now. We're going to talk to Dan Waldman, who's with Con Ed. Dan, are you there? Yes, thank you. Dan, give us an update as to where things are right now as far as power and what the situation is. The power remains off throughout the uh, World Trade Center uh, complex, uh, principally as a uh, precautionary uh, measure. Uh, we shut down uh, power at the request of the uh, fire department uh, in mid-afternoon, and also uh, gas and uh, steam service uh, to the complex has been shut off. We will be consulting with the fire department, the Port Authority, and so forth as to when that, uh, to turn that uh, power back on, uh, particularly to get people uh, back down and restore some elevator service. But I'd like to, to caution that uh, there remains extensive damage in the uh, building and uh, it, it may be a spot, uh, service may be spotty mm -hmm. to the uh, Trade Center for some time until we can assess damage and, and make restoration. Dan, with the power off now, how is that affecting rescue operations? You touched on that, but can you give us a little more detail? Well, basically, clearly it would hamper uh, use of the uh, elevators uh, and, and that sort of thing, and lighting becomes a concern uh, later on. Uh, the principal thing, though, is to get the power off uh, so as there is no interaction between electricity and water or any of the other things that could happen in the building. So at the request of the fire department, we're keeping the uh, power off until they mm. tell us to turn it back on. No emergency power of any sort, right? I mean, I, Danny there? Yes. There, there is no emergency power of any sort. In there may be uh, arrangements for that would be made by the uh, Port Authority. Yeah. At the height of the problem, Dan, how large of a problem were you dealing with? What area did you cut off? How many people were affected? How many businesses? Well, basically for us it's one customer, but it is a very huge customer, namely the uh, World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. uh, we also cut off service to the uh, Vista Hotel, and uh, we had to cut off service uh, temporarily to the uh, Downtown Athletic Club and uh, one other building in the area. We're working to restore that now. Again, all that was done as a precautionary measure for safety reasons. And early on, of course, everyone was thinking that it might have been a transformer problem with Con Ed at one of the substations. Quickly, you knew that was not the problem, though? Yes, we did. The, uh, our substation in the area is uh, hundreds of feet north of the uh, location of the uh, blast, and we knew relatively early that our substation was unaffected, and our equipment uh, did not appear to uh, uh, be the cause of this. And uh, there were worries, of course, at that point about uh, possibilities of a PCB spread and the like, but since there was no transformer problem, we didn't have that. We did hear there might have been an asbestos problem, though, that might result from the explosion. There, I have no knowledge of any asbestos uh, problem arising uh, from Con Edison here. Mm -hmm. And the transformers, by the way, uh, involved uh, contain no PCBs. Okay. Great. Dan Walden from Con Ed, thank you for joining us. So, you know, we're talking about...